Morning Community Family Church. Let's all stand together in the house of the Lord. It's good to see you all today to worship him. Hallelujah. We bless your mighty name, God. Thank you, Jesus.
We bless your name, God. You are worthy to be praised. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He holds all authority in his hands. And we walk in that same authority. Amen. Woo. Oh, I know that you move the mountains. You move the mountains. So the wind and waves be still. You cast out demons.
Bible says that God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Can we lift up our praises to the King today? Lord, we worship you, Jesus. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Come help me sing. No sweeter name. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. Sing no greater name. No greater name than the name of Jesus. No greater name have I ever known. No greater name. No
trying on. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's house this morning. He is our light. The Bible says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. From the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Let his house be filled with praise. Let his house be filled with glory. His house, his praise, his house, his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. We're so glad that you're with us. The Bible says, come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So it's so wonderful to bless the Lord with our brothers and sisters today. If it's your first time here, we're delighted that you're with us and we would love the opportunity to connect with you. So just reach in the seat in front of you, first time guests, get a connection card, fill that out. And when it comes time for our offering, we'd like you to take that connection card and drop it off on one of our offering stands here at the front, the back or the balcony. Or if you see one of our friendly staff members or volunteers, you can hand that to one of them. Can we let our guests know how greatly we appreciate them being with us in God's house this morning. Just one announcement. I want to let you know that we do have another opportunity for you to take the journey. Yes, in the month of May. We're in the month of April right now, and we're now getting through our sessions of the journey. The journey is our experience here at Community Family Church, where you get to know where we've been, where we are now, where God is taking us, and how many believes that God is taking us to great places at Community. Amen. Also an opportunity for you to get connected here, get connected in a great way. So make plans to take the journey in May. You can text the word journey to 859-359-3997 or get a connection card, put the journey on there and your information or go to cfcky.com and click on the journey. I promise you it will absolutely benefit your life if you take the journey. This is going to be our last session of the journey in May until we do it again in the fall time. So we would love everybody. Someone say everybody. everybody. We would love for everyone at Community Family Church to take the journey, to learn about everything, and to be connected in a great way. So make sure you do that. We're blessed this morning. Can you hear amen? amen. We truly are blessed. Let's say our offering declaration in faith together. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs in the jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Say this loud with me. We are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, say amen. amen. If you've not been coming here very long and it may, may feel uncomfortable hearing about us saying those declarations, but I can tell you that everyone here can say it is a joy to give in this offering today. It is our joy. No one is making us do it. It's out of a cheerful heart that we love to give in the offerings. We love to bless the people of God because we get to see the mighty things that God can do. Little as much, right, when God is in it. When you take it in his hand, put it in his hands, he can multiply it then. 
and it can feed many people. So we are grateful today to be tithe payers to give in this offering. Three ways you can give online at cfcky.com or text the word give to 859-359-3997 or give in person with a check payable to CFC or cash in an envelope with your name on it. Those watching online, thank you so much for being with us today. It is a beautiful day in Kentucky. We hope it's beautiful where you are as well, but we're so glad that you're joining with us today. We'd love for you to also participate in this offering. And if you do that, please tuck in a prayer request or a praise report so we can worship the Lord with you. But if you'd like to send a check in the mail, you can send that to 11875 Taylor Mill Road, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Let's go before the Lord in prayer today. God, we thank you so much for your power and your spirit who's manifested in this place. Thank you, God, that we can bless your name with our brothers and sisters today, celebrating what a great and mighty God you are. Thank you that we can worship you with our hands clapping, our feet dancing, our mouths shouting your praises, Lord, but we're also truly grateful for the opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offerings. So Lord, move upon this offering today. Meet every need, and with every dollar that is given, let it represent a soul that is one for your kingdom. We give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. amen. Please stand with me, and you may give it this time. Come on, put those hands together now. There's joy in the house today. Come on, sing this with us. I feel the joy, the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost following me. Yes, I feel the joy. devil's games keeping me in bondage through my sorrow and pains i can live better i will go another day i'm here to claim deliverance in jesus name i feel, I feel the joy of the lord fresh fresh on me, on me. Blessed, but I've been set free. I feel the joy of the Lord. Of the Lord.
but saved, covered by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to find somebody you know, somebody you don't know, somebody you're wondering who they are. If you don't shake hands, at least smile and say, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stretch yourself out a little bit. Just find the key. Uh, la, 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 la. You haven't found the key yet. Some of you don't even are looking at me. Uh, now with that same key. Oh, I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Bless your name, bless your name. We're so grateful today. I preached in North Carolina Thursday and Friday, and it's a phenomena. The people that are helping us build this new sanctuary and that are happy about it. I mean, I got Pentecostal handshakes, 20s, 5s, 10s, 25s and 10s, and by the time the handshake was over, it was a thousand bucks come in. I just kept on... I just kept on shaking hands and put it in my walk. Put in my... I'm saying hallelujah. And so far right now, by the time, praise the Lord, we're praying that we will not have to use the line of credit, that we will put this building under roof debt free. It's what we're believing God for. 
We're believing God to do the whole thing debt free, but we got to get it under roof debt free first. And so we're really believing God for that, but it's just amazing because out of the people that have given, you know, the song that came to me, 10,000 give a thousand, and we'll be raised five million dollars. That's what will come in. Actually, it'll be about nine if we put it under roof debt free. That's unbelievable. And so what I'm saying is this. I ask how many cumulatively have given at least a thousand, thinking there at least there has to be four thousand if we brought in four million. That only makes sense. Uh-uh. It's like twelve, thirteen hundred. I said, well, that don't make any sense. Where in the world is this money coming from? And it's coming from widows, pilots, school teachers, McDonald's workers, Walmart workers. It's coming from farmers. And it came from a family from Akron today, from the United, maybe I shouldn't say. Well, you don't know who they are and they don't know who they are. But I have a great following of United Pentecostals because I know everywhere I go, they come up to me and they say, we watch you. I say hallelujah because they love Jesus and they love the Holy Ghost. And if Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Word are in it, they're in it. And uh, the Baptists love the Word of God. And uh, if they hear the Word of God, you're on the right page. And uh, the family from Akron came today and gave me uh, some money and a chunk of silver. And I said, hallelujah. I was going to put it in my pocket. I was afraid it'd pull my drawers down a little more than they ought to be. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to put it in a proper place. Praise the Lord. But uh, we're so thankful. And at the end of service, all of our internet family that's watching, because we've had 77 new families, new givers this week. We are now 77 new ones. And I just, I'm just going to tell you all, and then I'm going to, uh, I'll read these at the end. When we get into the altar service, I'm going to go over and I'm going to speak to our internet family because I, I wish you could go with me. I wish I could carry every one of you to these meeting, meetings that I'm going to and watch the people come in. They know, they watch, they hear the preaching, they know exactly what's going on and they say, we're gonna help you build that. I don't have much, but I'm gonna help you. And uh, so we're so thankful, but from Alabama, Arizona, California, England, the country of England, Florida, Georgia, Iowa, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Mississippi, North Carolina, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and then our new partners that God has blessed us with. You see, Tommy Bates Ministries is, uh, I thank God for the offerings. The churches are very generous to me. Um, they're very generous on when I go out. And they're helping us build the building. They give me an offering, plus they give me an offering. They give me an offering, plus a donation to help build the building. But it's the partnership. Partnership just keeps on going. It's like your your uh, income, you know. And and I thank God for our partnership because we we still every week are getting new partners that say, look, I can give at least twenty five dollars a month. That's about the size of a large pizza from Pizza Hut with a Mountain Dew and some breadsticks and I can help you, I can do that. So from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, we have Norma. From Hamilton, New Jersey, we have Arlene. From Mount Dora, Florida, we have Michael. From South Africa, we have Nico and Cecilia. From Midway, Ohio, we have Elmer and Dora. From Elmira, New York, we have Sharon. From Fort Thomas, Kentucky, Sarah. From Chillicothe, Missouri, Gary. And from Augusta, Georgia, we have Doris. Now, these are partners, people that are partnering with this ministry. And uh, I want you right now to our internet family and those that are helping us build this building, I want us to give God a praise and 
gratitude to God because giving comes from the heart. You can't make somebody give something. But somebody has to move on their heart in order for them to give. So let's give God great praise for all of our partners. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As many of you know that I went to Baton Rouge and Brother Jimmy swaggered. I went to give him honor, but it's turned around. He's given me so much honor. I am the first one that has ever had GIM, Jimmy Swaggered Ministries, label on a music project that he's allowing me several months to offer this. He's not even offering it all. He wants me to put all of this money on the building fund. And we have, we're, if you want your name on the plaque, that's $100. But you can get that at the normal price that they're, that they're going to be selling them when they market them. And that's available today at $20 if you would like that. But remember, everything is going on the building fund. It's going on the building fund. And we want to give God thanks and uh, how that he's moving. I can't wait. The crane is going to be coming. It was supposed to come this week, but the weather put us back another week. But it'll come next week. The crane will be here to start setting the steel. And you're going to start seeing something getting higher and higher and bigger and bigger. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand together. This is an old song that says, Isn't He Wonderful, Wonderful? I was raised on this. This song is older than I am. I believe it's older than my mom and dad. Probably goes back to my great-grandmother's church. It's just a song that people used to sing very often, every time they got together. Before they would have prayer meetings, they would start singing this song. And sometimes these old songs come up out of this old well, and they bring back memories, because it says, eyes have seen, ears have heard what's recorded in this word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? And I'm telling you today, I thank God for all of the, you know, the things that go along with church, the singing and the music. But when you're an eyewitness of the grace of God, there is no other name. You can say that with boldness. I have never heard of testimonies in the name of Buddha, in the name of a million and a half Hindu gods, in the name of Scientology, in the name of Allah, in the name of whatever name. I have Hira Krishna. I have never. I've never heard people say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I was sick and I was healed. I was depressed and joy came to me. I had no hope, but now I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. My home was broken up, but Christ came and built me up. And so we're going to sing this song. It just simply says, and you, the words will be up there. And if you don't know it, this is a good old song that you can learn and you can sing it in your house by yourself if you don't feel like you want anybody to listen to you sing it in the car just throw your head back it says these words is it let's go up two notes now isn't he wonderful 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 isn't jesus my lord wonderful Eyes have seen, ears have heard what's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? One more time, oh, isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Jesus, my Lord, wonderful. Eyes have seen, ears have heard what's recorded. It's recorded. God's Word 
Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. I was on my way uh, to High Point, North Carolina, where I preached. And on my way there, as soon as I got off the plane, I get a text and it said that dad had fallen in the driveway. He was taking the water out of this big, huge container. They're watching right now. And got some bad scrapes on him. And we didn't know if he was broken ribs, broken hip, broken leg, broken arm. When you're 90 years old, you're a candidate for all of that. And... Uh, Got down the waiting, got into the ER by ambulance, and when they got there, no room, no beds were available. They had him sitting in a wheelchair, and he said, "We don't even have a bed." And uh, but after a, I don't know, my sister Vicky's a pretty good persuader. And I don't know if she had anything to do with it or not. <laughs> but they did get him in a room, and I just want to say I'm so thankful because after all the CAT scans, he's got pulled muscles and stuff. Mom is doing out of this world great. Mom is... She's wearing herself out. She's making spaghetti and meatballs and you name it. She's doing, she's doing the whole works. And, uh, but Dad's got a men, so they're watching today. But after the CAT scans came back and the x-rays, they said no broken bones, just some pulled muscles. So we're giving God praise. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we can say, isn't he wonderful? I don't know where people go that are in Scientology. What do they do? When you get a call at 2 o'clock, in the afternoon that your 90 year old father has fallen and you don't know so what do you do in Scientology do you go to do you have to call Clearwater and say could you turn that high powered telescope up just a little bit more so you could find the aliens who are supposed to tell us where we came from and what our purpose is and I know this sounds silly but people that have bought 185 pieces of property in Clearwater, Florida, that own 101 acres in Clearwater, Florida, that have to pay, their, their tithe has to be at least 400,000 to be a part of that community a year. We're not talking about, we're talking about educated people, supposedly. We're talking about very rich people. We're talking about movie stars. This isn't some crazy, this is deception. But where do you go? Do you say, look at that telescope and see if you can get an alien up there to help me? An alien, somebody you don't know. Woo! I don't even need a telescope. I got a hotline to heaven. I said I got direct contact. I got a Holy Ghost walkie-talkie inside of me. All I have to say is, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Yeah. Call him up. Yeah. Call him up. Yeah. Call him up. Yeah. You can call him in the morning. You can call him in the noonday. You can call him when the sun goes down. without the Lord I'm glad I'm saved thank you Jesus Woo. I'm going to read the first three verses and you're going to read the last one it's up on the screen Mark chapter 6 verse 53 and when they had passed over they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore and when they were come out of the ship straightway they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard that Jesus was. Verse 56. Now I know there's a big long old English word here but it'll help your vocabulary. So don't act like you can't pronounce words. Come on. Stretch yourself out. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, 
they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Woo! Somebody said, well, that's, oh my goodness, that's over, that's almost 2,000 years old. Anybody got a witness in this house? That you also touched him. We have a high priest that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Let this word be preached in love, mercy, compassion, demonstration, and power. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. We got the title of this message up there. Let's read it together. The storm blew them another direction. The storm blew them another direction. Our text is found in Mark chapter 6, verses 53 through 56. Storms in the Bible speak to us about trouble, speak to us about testing, winds of adversity, trials, opposition. Now, when I read the Bible, me personally, I have identified three different types of storms. There could be more, but these are the ones I have identified. And the first one I've identified is a storm that is self-inflicted. Now, this storm is illustrated in the whole book of Jonah. The entire book is God is dealing with a child of rebellion, a child that is fleeing from the presence of God, a man, God's child is what I'm calling him, a person that's continually running from the presence of God. And it's not easy. You will end up in a storm. You will end up with trouble. Because the Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. It's not easy to be a sinner. It's not easy to be a drunkard. It's not easy to be a man that's an infidel. That's a hard life to live. But there's a storm that will come to you in order for God to bring you to Him. There's a second storm I find in the Bible. And this storm is demonic opposition to the assignment and will of God in your life. God's given you an assignment. And we know that this one is demonic opposition because it is illustrated in the scripture because Jesus is in the boat. He says, I'm with you. And Jesus says, let us go over to the other side. You're not doing this by yourself. You've got an assignment. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And I'm going to be with you all the way to the completion. He that has begun a good work is faithful to complete it. I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to keep everything I've committed unto him against that day, against that time of trial. But then there is a third storm. This storm is to increase our faith. It is orchestrated by Jesus Christ himself. And it's to cause us to mature. It's to cause us to develop for the working of the ministry. Now you can only stay in a spiritual high chair so long. I mean, it's, it's a joy to give a baby a bottle. But when you got to move the mustache to put the bottle in, I think the baby needs to grow up a little bit. And I know it's the easy way, spiritually, just to have somebody else to do your praying and do your Bible reading and do your study and do your consecration, do your dedication and do all of this. And you call on mama and grandma and mommy and daddy and the preacher every time something goes wrong and you get prayed out of trouble. That's good you get prayed out of trouble. But Christ never redeemed you for you to stay in spiritual immaturity. He wants to develop you for the working of the ministry because that's how other people are going to be touched. Because you're going places tomorrow I won't be. 
You're, you're going to be somewhere in Walmart or somewhere at Macy's or somewhere working or somewhere in a college or some situation. You're going to be where I can't go. You're going to be where the five-fold ministry won't be. So the lost that walk in darkness are depending upon your development for the working of the ministry. And so Christ has to allow us to be tested. Now, I've got a pretty good-sized mouth. And uh, when I go to the dentist, I don't want him coming at me with a drill with none of those certificates hanging on the wall. I want to know his past examination. I want to know he knows which tooth to work on. I want to know that he been tested. Has he been thoroughly examined? I don't want to get on a 747 in New York City on my way to fly to Tel Aviv, Israel, and the pilot come out and say, hey, so glad to have y'all with me, you know. I've never flown before. This has always been a dream. I know I can do it. I am fully confident I can do this. It's only a 12-hour flight across that ocean. You have nothing to worry about. This has always been my dream. Everybody on that plane is going to say, get him out of here or get us off of this flight. No one wants to fly a plane with someone who has not passed the test, has not been examined. And something as, something as precious as your eternal soul must be handled with those who have been examined, those who have been tested. And I, you, can't, you can't all the time wait at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to call the pastor, call the deacon, call somebody. I need you to come and pray for me. I know people used to have a bad habit of that, but we got a new phone system now. You can't get us, you know. It shows who's calling and all that. <laughs> but in the old days, you used to have to answer the phone because you didn't know who it was. And you had to answer it every time. So I, I was 25 years old, I was a young pastor, and I was determined that I was going to save the world, and I was going to build this church, and I was going to work as hard as I could. I was going to be there if the flock said, man, the preacher's going to be there. I'm going to help them, I'm going to be there, I'm going to feed them, I'm going to rescue them, I'm going to do everything this pastor was going to do. So I answered all of those phone calls, all of them, every one of them. I mean, it rang and it rang. And I got one about 2 o'clock in the morning. They said, oh, Pastor Tom, oh, we need you. We need you right now. Oh, boy, here comes Super Preacher. It's ready for me. <laughs> we need you. We need you right now. I said, what's going on? I said, the devil's talking out of the stereo. And if you don't know what a stereo is, you have to ask your parents your grandparents. <laughs> it's an old record player. They said, the devil's talking out of the stereo. I said, well, what's he saying? They said, we don't, can't understand him. It's growly. It's scary. I said, I'm over. I'm coming right now. We'll get rid of that devil. Oh, being the, young, being the young Pentecostal pastor I was, full of the Holy Ghost and fire, we had a cat. Josh, Eric, and Ashley had a cat named Kitty. And Kitty always slept on top of my car. It was a hot July month and I rolled the windows down. For some reason, I had the back windows down about three inches. And Kitty decides to write, just take a nap inside the car. Decides to get back there and I didn't know Kitty was in there. So I mean, I, I get myself ready. I'm, I'm, you know, I brush my teeth and the whole works. And, and, I, and I'm going out in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Satan, you're going to come out tonight. You're coming out in the name of Jesus. You're going to come out of that stereo. Hallelujah. I was rebuking the devil, and I got all Oliver Road, and I'm telling you, that thing is just one, used to be only one lane. It was just as crooked as it could be, and I was on Oliver Road. About that time, the cat decided to manifest, and the cat jumped off, landed on my shoulder, and I went, Ah! <laughs> I said, Satan, you won't scare me out of this. 
You won't scare me out. And about that time, Kitty, about that time, Kitty looked over and went, meow. I said, oh, Kitty, what are you doing in this car? Well, right before I pulled into the house to do my exorcism on that stereo, I was, I was, Kitty was still back there. Well, I didn't know, but Kitty gets car sick, and I didn't know because she never went anywhere. And you think cat food stinks in this bowl? <laughs> Old Kitty, she threw up everywhere, and I said, how bad can this get? How bad can this get? Well, I'm telling you, I'm not going to get up in the middle of the night to go cast the demons out of your stereo or out of your earphones or whatever else you got. God wants you to grow up in maturity and take care of the devil yourself. God wants to increase your faith. He wants to grow us up to maturity for the working of the ministry. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible said that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the revelation, the appearing of Jesus Christ. He wants your trial to end up giving glory to God, end up giving praise to God, end up giving more honor to God. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12 he said beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you but when you are examined and when God is wanting to make you more mature and to develop you he said rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's ministry and sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed when it's over brothers and sisters. The glory of God is going to be revealed in your life that you may be glad with exceeding joy. So this kind of storm that we find in our text today is a storm to increase our faith, to reveal the glory of God in our lives. And Jesus, the Bible said, he sent them away. He said, I want you to go to Bethsaida. Bethsaida is on this side of the Sea of Galilee and the name means the house of fish or the fish house. He said, I want you to go to Bethsaida. He sent them away, but he just didn't send them away because that day they had had the most miraculous service you can imagine. There were 5,000 families that had gathered and they were there all day long and the people were hungry and Jesus took a little boy's lunch of just a few loaves and fish and he began to bless it and he brought broke it and as he began to distribute it it multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and multiplied everyone was filled everyone got a fish sandwich everybody had a fill they just it was such a wonderful day and Jesus collected 12 baskets had his disciples go bring the leftovers here see how much you got there were 12 big baskets of leftovers and Christ said I'm getting to send you away to Bethsaida. That's your assignment. That's where you're going. But I'm going to give each one of you 12 disciples, 12 baskets of fragments. I'm going to give each one of you evidence of what happened today. The miraculous power of provision. The, the evidence of the miracle of provision. They had seen Christ as a blind man healer. They had seen him as one that could raise the dead. They had seen him as one that could calm a storm. They had seen him as one that opened the deaf ears. But they had never seen the God of provision. This opened up a brand new revelation to them. And he gave them those big baskets. But the Bible said when the evening was come, darkness, no light. You see, when the examination begins, the Bible said we look through a glass darkly. You know, it's not like you're taking a test and you got the answer sheet right over here and all you got to do is just copy the answers over here. You don't know anything that way. If you're just copying from one page to another, it becomes dark and the darkness is there. And the Bible said we look through a glass darkly, but in the middle of their assignment, you see, this is how the watches go at 
night. In the Jewish uh, days of the first century, there was the first watch. That was between 6 in the evening and 9 o'clock. Then there was the second watch. That was 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock midnight. Then there was the third watch. That's between 12 midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning. And then there was the fourth watch. And that was between 3 in the morning till 6 in the morning. And the mysterious thing about it is it's at its darkest right before the sun breaks. But Jesus, he sees them. The Bible said he was alone on the land but he saw them. Now I've been to the Sea of Galilee. I've been going there since 1972. The Sea of Galilee is 13 miles long. It's 8 miles wide. You cannot see someone like Christ saw them in the night toiling and rowing. It's impossible. This is supernatural vision which lets you know when you're under a test of examination and you're under a test and trial that's going to improve your faith that's going to develop you that there is an all seeing eye that is supernatural that knows every little thing that's going on in your life the Bible said he saw them toiling in rowing he saw the wind was contrary but he didn't come in the first or the second or the third watch the Bible said he waited until the fourth watch and he came walking on the sea we must realize and we must always remember that he comes to our place of struggle he comes to you when you cannot go to him he will come to you no matter where you are no matter where you live no matter what your situation is he is going to come to you and that was that wonderful wonderful revelation here is Christ he's in the middle of my storm but what does he do they see another revelation of him they knew that he could feed the hungry they knew that he could raise the dead they knew that he could calm a storm they knew he could open blinded eyes they knew that he could take care of leprosy they knew that he could cast out demonic powers but they never had the revelation that he can walk on everything that is trying to swallow me up and whatever's trying to swallow you up whether it be an addiction whether it be an emotional feeling whether it be hurts from the past whether it be a bad marriage whether it be molestation or abuse or something that you went through in the past and this thing is like a sea like a sea monster that wants to swallow you up Jesus gave gave them a revelation that I can walk on everything that wants to swallow you up. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. He came out of the supernatural. He was in the supernatural. When he saw him without the natural eye, he was in the supernatural. When he walked on the water, he was in the supernatural. When the storm ceased, but then when he got into the boat, the storm was over and the test was over. Everything was over. He was back now in the natural world with them. And the Bible said that they were great amazed they were amazed beyond measure and they wondered what kind of man is this hallelujah they were greatly amazed and the storm blew them into another direction they were supposed supposed to go to Bethsaida it is here here's the city of Magdala that's where Mary Magdalene was delivered of seven devils here is the city of Capernaum oh what miracles had been done in Capernaum. Simon Peter's mother healed so many miracles in the city of Capernaum. But between Magdala and between Capernaum, 
Capernaum. There was the land of Gennesaret. They had never been there before, but the people had heard what happened in Magdala, and they heard what happened in Capernaum. And what happened was this. The wind, the storm blew them into another direction. Not Bethesda. I mean, not Bethsaida. But it took them to the land of Gennesaret between Magdala and Capernaum. They could have said, what in the world are we doing here? This is not where we intended to be. But Christ wants all of us to know, even when the storm blows you to a place, I'm not talking about necessarily a geographic region. I'm talking about a place. It blows you to a place, to a land that you've never been. Just open up your eyes because this is an opportunity for the Christ in you to be revealed at such a greater level that your eyes cannot even see, that you cannot even imagine the things that God can do. And when they landed in that region, those that knew him, they ran through the entire geographic area and they brought the sick. They brought those that were possessed with devils. They brought them on stretchers and they laid them on the sides. Now you've got to remember when Jesus was in Nain, he raised one boy from the dead. When he was in another location, he healed 10 lepers. When he came to the road to, to Jericho, he prayed for Bartimaeus. And there was one person whose blinded eyes were open. There was Mary Magdalene was one woman that he cast out demons. There was another woman caught in the act of adultery, just one. But they had never seen such a magnitude like this. They land in Gennesaret. And as far as the eye can see, I see the crippled. I see the blind. I see the possessed with devils. I see the epileptic. I see every condition that is known to man. I can see it. But if they had not had the storm, they never would have been blown into an area where the revelation was of God was there. And Jesus Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I said, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Being the Jew that he was, he had tassels on the end of his garment, not the prayer shawl. He had the tassels like all the rest of the Jews. And Jesus, with the tassels, identifying him of the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, of the root and the branch of David, they they laid the sick. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we cannot even imagine in our mind what a day that was. I've heard worldly preachers, I've heard dead beat religious preachers say people talk about miracles and there's very few that's listed in the word of God. I wonder what Bible that they're reading because the Bible starts with Genesis in the beginning. God said let there be light and there was light if that's not a miracle I don't know I read the last chapter I John saw that city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven if that's not a miracle I don't know what one is we serve a God of miracles a God of the supernatural a God that can do what you cannot do that can go where you cannot go this message is to increase your faith if you're going through a storm if you're going through a test God's going to blow you into a situation where you're going to see something you've never seen before hey hold on I said hold on <laughs> I can't even imagine the epileptic, the blind, the deaf, the crippled, the paralyzed, various disease, cancer, cancer, tumors, tumors, growths, 
growths. Never seen it done like this before. He's walking in the fringes on the end of his garment. He just, whoo, he just walks. And every time they touch somebody, a blinded eye opens, a deaf ears unstop. People convulsing with demonic spirits. The, the demons are coming into subjection to him. They saw a manifestation of God that was totally, would have never been revealed any other way. So think it not strange concerning that fiery trial that is to try you. Oh, God wants to test us. He wants to try us. He wants our hands to raise when we can't see the outcome. He wants our praise to endure. He don't want us being wishy-washy half in and half out he don't want us walking around like vagabonds not knowing who he is he wants you to know that your God is great your God is greatly to be praised hold on brothers and sisters I said hold on ride out your storm ride out your storm there's joy coming in the morning we been may endure for a night but joy comes Woo! in the morning is that the right key well, isn't that amazing Woo! Betty Jean Robinson wrote this song because this might be you you've been in you know, Mark, you sing it better than I do. Can we get your mic working? Get him a mic. Woo. Sing that verse. You need the words? They're right up there. You've been in the storm. It seems like forever. And your night of confusion has been oh so long. Your ship has lost anchor, and the storm's got you drifting. But the night's almost over. So stand together. has been oh so long this, this gets a little worse your ship has lost anchor and the storm's got you drifting oh listen to this the night is almost over
list our ministers to come and those who pray around the altar. We're here to help you. And if you're here and you need anything from the Lord, this is how that we bring our services to a, I don't even like to say end, I think it's a beginning for some people. As we let you know that God is a savior, a healer, a deliverer. And if you need salvation, you need healing, you need victory in your soul. This altar's open right now. It's been open all day, but this is a personal invitation for you. If you have a prayer request, you need something from God. And I want the rest of you, I don't know who this message is for, and I don't know why the Holy Ghost gives me these messages. I don't get these out of a book. They're not on some rotation thing and I've been preaching 52 years. They're not in, in a computer. I push a button and rotate one through and say, okay, here we go for that one. These come through prayer and evidently whoever's listening right now, this is for you. You're going through a test, a trial, but God wants you to know the wind may blow you where you didn't think you ought to be, but you just watch. You let God do something through you. Hallelujah. Sing that chorus again. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, release those who need to pray today. In Jesus' name. You watching by internet. If you need a touch of heaven, it's for you. on the internet to the internet family you that need to leave we'll see you at six o'clock tonight for our evangelistic service this service here altar service is going great i don't know who these people are or any of them but they're praying through tonight they're praying through and if you need a touch of god this altar is open for you sing it brother mark hallelujah you're hurting Hallelujah. Pour on the Jesus and ride Praise God. We cannot thank you enough. The Spirit of God is in this place. I know you feel the presence of God, and many of you, I just wish I could come through that camera, lay my hands on you. I wish you were here right now, but thanks be to God who has given us the technology the technology to come on your iPhone, up on your phone, up on your iPad, to come right into your house, your home, in the park. Some of you are watching in different countries, the sun is going down. Some of you, it's in the wee hours of the night, but God knows where you are. The wind may be blowing you in a direction that you didn't think you'd be, but the glory of God's gonna be revealed. And I'd like to mention these names today because it's so precious, so precious what God is doing. Next week, we should have you a very nice video showing you the progress of what's happened. I can't wait until the steel goes up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
name these names and then I'm going to pray for all of you. We have Sheila from Alabama. All of these are from Alabama. Sheila and Leslie. From Arkansas, we have Linda. From Yuma, Arizona, David. From Arizona, Rosemary. We have Peter and Cindy from California. We have Ruth from California. Jeff from California. All the way from England, we have Peter. We have four from Florida, Gary, Penny, Marianne, and Michael. Looks like we have four from Georgia. We have Robney, Sarah, Don and Shane, and Jeff, all from Georgia. From Iowa, we have Rose. From Idaho, we have Coralie. We have three from Illinois. Danny and Joyce, Sherman and Don, and Linda. We have three from Indiana. We have Ronald, Larry and Rhonda, and Jackie. Now we've got a whole bunch from Kentucky. I'm gonna tell you, my home state is staying with me. We thank you so much. We got Cole and Rebecca, Andrew and Crystal, Linda, Judy from McKee, Kentucky, Precious, Shannon and Jessica, Brian and Tammy, Jeffrey and Rosemary from Lexington, David and Lisa from Verona, Kentucky. We got Mark and Melissa from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I know you can feel the presence of the Lord. We've got Jean from Baltimore, Maryland. Lynn and Angie from Michigan. Marianne from Minnesota. Mike and Karen from Missouri. We got three from Mississippi, Dan and Carol, Diane, Rogelio and Ashley. We got two from North Carolina, Kay. And then we got Peggy from Knoxville. We got Arca from New York, New York. We got a bunch from Ohio. Cincinnati, Dorothy, Columbus, Priscilla, Clarksville, Aaron, Dover, Deborah, and Marva from Ohio, William and Ida, Victoria and Roy from Hillsboro, Dean and Rosemary, Terry and Kelly from Bell Fountain. I know who that is. Thank you so much, pastors, for how you're helping me. We love you so much. We got Greg and Cynthia from Glendale, Ohio. We got David from Pennsylvania. Now we got a whole bunch from South Carolina. Hallelujah. We got Dennis from Greenville, Christopher and Marie from Conway, Sharon from North Myrtle Beach, Rick and Elaine from Conway, Harold and Wander from Richard and Vicki, and William. South Dakota. Seems like we never get anyone from South Dakota. But we've got Jeff from Aberdeen. From Tennessee, we have Vicki from Knoxville, James from Quebec, Jim and Alan from Seymour. And from Texas, from Texas we have Gene and Ann. We have a Zenith from San Antonio. Jessica from El Dorado, and Annette from Luba from Virginia. We have Lois from Virginia Beach and Norma from Mineral. And from Virginia, we have Sarah from Coburn, Virginia. That's all the names. I want to pray. I want to pray for you that God will bless you. If you've been in a storm, God's going to see you through. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for everyone in our internet family. I, I thank you, God. I appreciate how that you're moving up on the hearts of men and women to help us build this sanctuary. Now I'm asking you, Lord, to come to them in their time of affliction and need. Heal their bodies. Put their homes back together. 
bless their churches with revival in Jesus name we love you all we'll see you tonight at six o'clock God bless you we are so excited about the new sanctuary that's being built right now and I have just completed my very first project with Jimmy Swagger Ministries and the first thousand copies, Brother and Sister Swagger, are letting me be able to offer this and I'm going to do it in honor of them. The very first thousand copies are going to go for the promotion of our new sanctuary. We're gonna be giving you information how that you can be a part of this great, wonderful project to honor Brother and Sister Swagger and we get to build the new sanctuary also. To join in with Pastor Bates and be one of the 1,000 families to donate at least $100 or more in honor of Brother and Sister Swagger for the building of the new sanctuary, visit TommyBates.com, text JSM to 859-359-3997 or call 859-356-8851. In appreciation of your gift, we'll send you Pastor Tom's new CD, I'm Getting Back Up. This is a limited time offer, so donate today.